Thank y'all for subscribing to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Hit the like button. Let your friends know about it. If they ain't subscribed, tell them to subscribe too so they can be up on the videos when I drop them. It's your boy Pelican Bay K9s. Give me that pit bull and hog dog news. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> seen all different kind of things and all different kind of dogs not saying I've seen it all but I've seen some things you know what I'm saying and this dog here this dog this dog name is Garner's Black Chance you know you may have had a dog off of you may have heard of Garner's Black Chance we bought the dog from Garner as an old dog so that was our dog you know what I'm saying we didn't make some of these breeders in, these, in on online pen but we ended up we bought the dog from Garner you know and the dog is off Garner's Maurice and a, a daughter of Chinaman. And Maurice is off Spike. Maurice is off Spike. Garner's Maurice is off Spike. And the female is off Chinaman. So that was a grand, we had, it was a granddaughter of Chinaman. You know, there was a grandson of Chinaman on the bottom. And a grandson of Spike on the top. So, you know what I'm saying? I had a little hands in on a lot of different breeds, you know, a lot of different bloodlines. I'm not just a red boy Jocko man all my life. I had to try different things out and see different things before I got to where, you know, I don't like to lose. You know what I'm saying? It's just plain out and simple. So, all right, first thing I want to say before we get deep into it, when you're taking your dogs out to hog hunt, always, I mean, they ain't always, but if you can, if you got the time, work your own hound, you know what I'm saying, for your hog hunt. Condition your own hound for the show. Whatever you're going to do or take your dog at, whatever kind of competition it is, work your own dog if you can, if you got the time, you know, because that'll play a part in the whole situation. You know, the bonding, the bonding time and knowing what your dog needs. You know what your dog needs more than anyone, you know what I'm saying? More than the person who knows more about conditioning than you. But you know that dog better than that person. See, it's easier for one of them old schoolers from the 70s and the 80s to come back, jump in the dog game with no dogs, and to get back right than it is for one of you new guys to come up with a whole bunch of money and, and, and get, you know, get your dog thing pumping the way it needs to be pumping with some real quality bulldogs. Main reason is, no matter what, the old schooler know what he's looking for. He know what he's looking for when he step one foot in the game. You know what I'm saying? He knows, and the thing about it, people only gonna understand what they've seen before. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's not gonna understand what they haven't seen, including me. You know, we only understand what we've seen in our era. So when people that was in the eras before us start talking about, oh man, them, uh, old Mayday what nothing, or uh, Big John what nothing, old Grand Champion Yellow what nothing. Man, I wanna tell y'all about some Bulldogs, you know what I'm saying? Them guys from the 60s and the 70s might be talking like that. They might feel like their dogs was way superior than our dogs. You know what I'm saying? So people only go by with what they see. You know what I'm saying? So we've seen the stuff from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, or whatever. Like, we only can go by what we've seen. And that's why sometimes it's hard for the old schoolers to get back in the game. Because it's a whole bunch of pit bulls out here. But... The old schoolers used to seeing certain things and dealing with certain kind of dogs and it's harder for them to find them kind of dogs and that kind of quality now. So they might be like, oh man, this game is all Kool-Aid now. It's all Kool-Aid. It ain't like it used to be. It ain't like it used to be. Just like all the sports. Just like all the sports getting soft as all the sports fans say. None of the sports are as tough as they used to be back in the days. So, you know, the old schoolers say the same thing about the dogs. Man, these dogs ain't like the dogs from our days. Man, these dogs ain't like them. 
You know what I'm saying? Because everybody only know what they seen. But a man who know what he's seen, he know what he's looking for. If you don't know what you're looking for, you know what I'm saying? You just jumping in the game with a whole bunch of money. You know what I'm saying? You think everything you get that that goes and, and, and win one hunt is that shit. You know what I'm saying? Until you take it out and uh, two years later, wasted a year or two of your time, and now you realize that that wasn't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Time is money, you know, and time is gaining knowledge sometimes. How can I put it? You gain a lot of knowledge, and knowledge is something money can't buy. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to save you a lot of money and make you some money in the long run. Now, since I'm talking about the old schoolers, I done heard Mr. Floyd say he think Zebo was off Eli, and Mr. Don say he not even sure what Tombstone um, pedigree was. Like, so, you know, old schoolers had their shit going on with them. They had a lot of stuff going on with them, you know, but they pushed it on down to us, and we argue every day about it on Facebook and on YouTube and all different kind of things about pedigrees that they fixed for us. <laughs> and, you know, we spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on dogs that really don't exist. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about all dogs, you know what I'm saying? Just hypothetically speaking, you know what I'm saying? Just hypothetically speaking about, you know, paper peddling and, you know, how serious it was, how serious it is, and how strict things are now. So things weren't that strict back then, so imagine how easy it was to do things back then, as far as paper peddling and all that. Imagine if it was real loose right now, as far as paper peddling with the real company. If it was real loose and you could easily do it. How many dogs would be Red Boy dogs? How many dogs would be Eli dogs? How many dogs would be Bolio dogs that come from a dog pound? that come from the other side of the road, that come from this place, that come from that place, you know? So, we gotta kinda appreciate the stiffness in the uh, paper companies, but at the same time, hey, people still doing it. People still doing it, so, ain't nothing you can really do, but just hope you deal with an honest person and hope you get your good dog. Crossroad dog, but I'm gonna tell you the honest truth. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you the honest truth. When it comes to the Crossroad dogs, Sambo was one of the cream of the crops outside of Fatty. You know what I'm saying? Outside of Fatty and a, you know a few more or whatever. But Sambo was uh, cream of the crop when it comes to that Crossroad stuff. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, he out hunted at least uh, at least ten other Crossroad dogs. At least ten. You know what I'm saying? And I remember clear as day he out hunting a, a fatty and um, Frisco male. Took a, a fatty and Frisco male out to the woods, you know, with him and Sambo. Got out there, Sambo out hunting them. The Frisco male messed himself up on the hog, hit the hog hit a ball in the face with a touch, had to take him to the vet. You know, and now he, he ain't do no more hunting after that. That was it for him, you know. So when that was a, a fatty and Frisco male. Toe Jam and Chinaman Mail. Sambo, it was a DOA on that one. DOA, Toe Jam, Chinaman Mail. Uh, Brute and uh, Fatty Mail. 15, 15, 10, 15 minutes. Two, two or three of them, two or three different ones of different litters of Brutes and Fatty. Uh, Al Champion Brute and uh, Champion Fatty. Females. All right. So, like, and I mean, he was uh, toe jam and uh, razor back juice stuff. He was running through that stuff. You know what I'm saying? He was the only one that could do that, that came off that yard that, you know, that had the size 
He had the size just like Fatty. He wasn't no medium, medium sized dog. He was a 60 pound chain dog, 55 to 53. 55 was really his ideal weight. Nowadays, when it comes to the dog game, it needs to be two categories. Two categories. The dog that made the most money and the gamest dog. Because y'all be getting confused, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the way the game is now, the way the game sat up, like like I said, the way my bank account sat up, the way the game sat up is the man with the most money scares the little man. They're thinking he got a tough dog, you know what I'm saying? The little man thinks, oh, because this man uh, spending uh, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars, he got a 30, 40, 50, 70 um, thousand dollar dog. And no, all that means is he got a big, deep pocket. He got a deep pocket, you know what I'm saying? And his dog might be a piece of shit. You know, the game is kind of messed up, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You got to respect it for what it is, you know? And it is what it is. And you can't knock nobody else for having deep pockets. One thing I know, you know what I'm saying? And don't get it twisted. You're going to run into people with deep pockets with some deep dogs, you know what I'm saying? But, for the most part, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people got more money than they got dog. You know what I'm saying? It's easier to have more money than it is to have more dog. It can take you a lifetime to find the right dog. You know what I'm saying? It can take you a couple weeks to make a pocket full of money. <laughs> I guarantee you ain't gonna find the right dog in a couple weeks. Man, I remember going out on the hunts with Sambo early in the morning, maybe about six o'clock, something like that, five o'clock. I go to the club the night before. You know what I'm saying? I go to the club, I don't drink like that. So I go to the club, have me one or two drinks maybe. Just something, you know, have me kind of feeling all right. It stay in the club to probably about 3.30, you know, four o'clock. Hit the house, come to the house. I don't even go in the house. I come straight to the backyard from the club. Talk to my dog, talk to Bo. Give Bo that pep talk. You know what I'm saying? It's on now, baby. Them eight weeks, we was out there running up and down in that hot sun, it's on now. You know what I'm saying? That talk, and it's like, your dog sit right there and look at you and he understand what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? And think about it. Don't ask your dog to do nothing you wouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say work your own dog. Don't ask your dog to do nothing you won't do. You know, when you when he go out in them woods, he put his life on the line. Cause some hoes will, especially if you don't got that vest on, some hoes will get in your dog gut with them teeth. And you know, it depends on if you want to take them to the vet or if you make it to the vet. If you even make it, you can make it to the vet. You know, so you asking him to do a lot when you go out there chasing a 100, 200, 300 pound hog, you know what I'm saying? That will chase him, you know? So, you know, you gotta have that, 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 that conversation with him and you can't, like I said, you can't ask him to put his life on the line if you ain't gonna put your life on the line with him. Don't ask him to do nothing you ain't gonna do for him, you know? Every, like, don't shortchange yourself when it comes to this game, you know? When, you, when it comes to Taking them out there on that hog hunt, do not shortchange yourself. What I mean by that, it ain't a money thing. I don't mean shortchange. I mean, do not underplay, do not undercut yourself. You know what I'm saying? Do not take anything for granted. Do not underestimate anybody, no matter how small they are. I told y'all that once before, and I can't stress that enough. You know what I'm saying? Because you rolling in a Maserati and, 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 and got half a million dollars, do not mean that you about to come over here and run through this little thousand there because this dude got a couple thousand, he a thousand there because you got a couple thousand, you're not about to run through him you know what I'm saying, just because how you rolling you know, maybe because your dog better now but, that's why I tell you don't underestimate nobody because that person will underestimate them and be like, oh, man, who is that? He ain't nobody, he ain't nobody but I guarantee you, he might got a dog that'll take every dollar in your pocket every dollar in your pocket and man, that last hour before you go out to that hog hunt the sun ain't came up yet, cause he didn't be hot in the south, you know what I'm saying? The sun ain't came up yet, bubbles in your stomach. You know how you got, you know, if you don't got bubbles in your stomach, you ain't did something right, you know what I'm saying? Bubbles in your stomach, like, like I said before, like you're, like you're going to hit that, that walking out on the Super Bowl, on the field for the Super Bowl. When you're walking out on the court for the NBA Finals, like when you come out for the World Series to the field, that, the bubbles in your gut before you make that first swing, and before you make that first pass. Them bubbles in your gut. Once you get them bubbles out your gut, you're good. But let me get up out of here, YouTube fam. I love y'all. Hold me down.
Appreciate y'all watching the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell so your friends and everybody, even y'all know when the next video drop. Pelican Bay K9s. Let's get up out of here.